It's been a very busy morning, as you might imagine, uh, for Keith and everybody who does this for a living. So let's start with the big picture. Your thoughts on this class? Yeah, Jack, I mean, I think they filled every, every need that they had. And really, when you look at a class like this, you have to, you, after four plus years in the system, you really have to look at what Brian Kelly did is how does it fill the needs and what kind of players can come in and compete right away. And I think to that measure, they did a great job. I know you have written an evaluation of uh, each and every player who signed. And, folks, if you are interested in watching that, uh, all you have to do is go to uh, the Inside the Irish blog on NBCSports.com. Were there any surprises for you at all? Again, just one uh, signee today, but he's a good one, Daniel Cage, the defensive lineman, who I think does elevate this class. Yeah, I think the work that, that the staff did to kind of pivot and really make adjustments on the fly shows the great work on Daniel Cage and and Pete Mukwa are, are two guys that could really come in and, and make a difference at nose tackle and gives uh, the Irish some versatility between three- and four-man fronts. Um, I really think that what they did at linebacker, too, really infusing some athletic guys, uh, maybe some guys that are a little bit off profile when you look at uh, some of the things that traditionally have been done, but they've, you know, I, I can't find a way to, to call this class anything but rock solid. Where are they getting the impetus to maintain their momentum? Now, obviously, they did a great job capitalizing on the momentum of getting to the national championship game last year, as you pointed out in your blog a couple of days ago. Fourteen of these young men were signed before Notre Dame even played a game this fall, but they continued to pick up players and keep those 14 intact during a season that was not what they wanted it to be or what a lot of people thought it would be, but they didn't seem to lose any momentum in the recruiting area. Why is that? No, I think it's a, it's a combination of a lot of things. I, I think, I think when, you, when you think of the narrative of how to get a kid attracted to a school, you have to appeal to what appeals to them, whether that's playing time, whether that's a fit at a university, um, you know, whether that's a coaching staff or a new coaching staff, a new coordinator like Brian Van Gorder. Um, Notre Dame isn't any less attractive to players because they lost four games a season after going to the national title game. I think you can make a pretty logical explanation why that happened. And really, you can appeal to a kid and say, listen, if we had you, maybe we don't lose those four games. So I think it, it, was, it was a combination of a lot of things. I think the, you know, the ability to continue evaluating during senior film, the ability to you know, take a base of players like the 14 that were committed before the season and then really uh, close strong and, and, and find those targets that you know, maybe weren't on the board off the bat. You know, find guys like Johnny Williams that, that are you know, close to home and, and really win the long battles on guys like Miles Morgan and Tyler Luatua. So it, it's a combination of everything, but, but really, you know, the Notre Dame brand isn't any weaker today than it was last year. It just might not be at the top of the headlines right now. Does this class show any more flexibility in terms of the type of players recruited? For example, if you look at the linebackers in this class, they may not be as large size-wise as some of the previous linebackers, but they may be more athletic. Is that, is that a change maybe in philosophy? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it, for the first time, you know, you talk to somebody who, who follows this pretty closely, and, and, you know, I spend far too much time reading about this as well, and, and I think a lot of us do, but for the first time, they really are recruiting outside of profile. I mean, you don't usually see, at least in Brian Kelly's first four groups, you didn't see 215, 220-pound linebackers. You, you saw big thumping guys that could, you know, profile as an interior linebacker, and then, you know, edge players that are the size of Ben Council. Uh, this, this, looks like you know the ability to address um, some of the maybe weaknesses Notre Dame has athletically when the, when a defense spreads them out I think it also gives you a lot you know the ability to be diverse and, and cross train with some guys and that could be a defensive end that could be an outside linebacker um, and some inside linebackers that have the ability to play uh, sideline to sideline as well when you look at this class right now compared or combined with last year's class two consensus back to back top 10 classes. How does this help? And let's look at special teams. Coach Kelly, very open in that some of their special teams deficiencies were the fact that they really don't have, didn't have enough talent depth to be as good as they would like to be there. And they had a lot of starters on special teams. How do you think these back-to-back -back talented classes will help in that area? I mean, I, it, it can't do anything but help. And I think when you follow up a nice big number like last year with a nice big number like this year, and you finally push into that 85-man roster limit, that's, that's when you start to develop the kind of depth 
and the kind of competition that can allow you to, you know, establish younger players in that first year of con contribution as a special teams player. And then they kind of evolve up the chain. So last year was kind of the perfect storm on why special teams were poor in that there were a lot of injuries. You know, a lot of the frontline guys, it's okay to play starters on special teams when you're feeling okay about their backup. But when, you know, you lose 11 guys in the two deep on defense and you're relying on, you know, an inside linebacker and then a walk on behind him, you know, you've got some problems. So I, I, I think it was a combination of a lot of things last year, but I do think a lot of these freshmen can kind of make their, make their name on special teams to start off. Give me your evaluation of one of the critical positions in this class that I know the staff is happy with how they did defensive line. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a great pull. And, and, you know, I think Brian Kelly was just talking about a little bit ago is who knows what some of these guys are going to be. You know, once once today is over, you're not a five-star player anymore. You're an incoming freshman. So, you know, whether it's Grant Blankenship, you know, whether it's a guy like Jonathan Bonner, um, you know, the, the two guys that they pulled recently with Cage and Makwa, I mean, that's that's where it gets fun. Andrew Trombetti, if you talk to some people, they think he's the best player in this recruiting class, and he's on campus right now. So, I, I mean, there's there's this is the fun part. This is why we watch spring football. This is why we spend months in the offseason talking about it. it. It's the guessing game, and it's really going to be watching a lot of these guys develop at a, at a you know position group where there are not a lot of proven proven players. So the opportunity is there if someone wants to take it. You want to get to the point with a program where it's hard for freshmen to see the field, but you also want to be recruiting freshmen that are so good that it's hard to keep them off the field. So both short-term and long-term, as you look at this class, who do you project to be the biggest impact players, both short-term and then long-term? I think you got to look at Niles Morgan, the inside linebacker from Chicago. I mean, if you could make a really good argument that he's the most important recruit in this class, um, you know, long term, you got to think about guys like Nick Wisher, a tight end that, you know, Brian Kelly just called the probably the best set of hands and best pass catcher in the country in their mind. Obviously, two really big offensive tackles and, and Quentin Nelson and Alex Bars. Those guys are elite players that in other classes, they'd be, you know, widely celebrated. I think Nelson just was awarded a fifth star. Um, and then if, if you want to look at guys who might be below the radar, you have Johnny Williams, who's you know, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six guy, uh, Corey Holmes, who everyone calls T.J. Jones, which I think is a pretty good uh, uh, compliment. And then just just a lot of the, you know, the interesting characters like Jay Hayes, who's been around for so long that I think people forget that he had a really impressive offer list. So um, I'll tell you a bunch of names, so it makes me sound smarter soon, but I, but I think it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it, this is a fun, a fun group and a group that uh, may not have the, the five-star wattage that last year's class did but i think top to bottom is is really strong all right spring practice gets here very quickly this year for notre dame the first week of march so let's take a look at what this team needs to do in spring practice in terms of integrating uh the, the two early enrollees and preparing this team to both absorb this great recruiting class and be ready uh, to take on what is an insane schedule next fall and have more success than they had last season yeah, it's a perfect it's a perfect opportunity for both Justin Brent and Andrew Trimbetti. If you look at uh, Brent, there is I think one catch combined among the wide receivers that are currently on campus that have actually caught a pass from uh, from Everett Golson. So I mean, what a, what a good chance for for him to walk into a talented but young depth chart and try to stake his claim. Uh, you know, likewise with with Trimbetti, you know, Stephon Tuitt leaving really leaves a big hole at defensive end, and there's some guys getting healthy that might not be full go for spring practice. So those are two guys who are going to get a lot of reps and a lot of looks from the coaching staff and, and get them uh, involved early. All right, overall goals for this team in spring practice, for the guys coming back. I think you got to figure out what's going on in the offensive line. I mean, who's going to play left tackle? You've had four seasons of Zach Martin, uh, you know, really playing historically great football. And, you know, who goes there? Is it, is it, does Steve Elmer move over? Does Ronnie Stanley flip sides? Is Mike McGlinchey the guy who can step in? I know Brian Kelly talked uh, very complimentary of, of McGlinchey, and he's a, he's a big, tall, almost prototype NFL-type guy. But, you know, what happens on the offensive line? They're going to have to replace Chris Watt as well. Obviously, how do you not talk about Everett Golson and, and his return and Malik Zaire, who Kelly was, uh, you know, very open about 
it's going to be a competition, not a not a automatic job in Golson's hand. And then you know just you know who replaces T.J. Jones and look at the inside linebacker battle. There's there are a lot of positions that that really you know have some question marks, but they're they're good question marks. I know you've got another commitment coming up here at 1:30 Eastern. So uh, any closing comments, Keith? No, I just think. You know, a lot of times when we talk about recruiting, we, we lose the forest, you know, through the trees. And, and you know, you, you, you constantly sit there and hope, hey, I hope this guy commits today. Or, you know, let's, oh, if we get this fax, it's going to make the class. But, you know, a signature from a guy who's been committed since 2012 is just as valuable as a guy who's been committed since this morning. So I think when you look at this group um, and you look at the kind of confidence on Brian Kelly's face, I think he understands what – the Irish did this year. I think they've got a great base now. Backing these classes together really gives them the opportunity, like he said, to, to kind of refine what they do next year, maybe be a little bit more selective, um, and then build the roster the right way. All right, Keith, we really appreciate the time. And, folks, uh, you can read uh, Keith's outstanding work on the Inside the Irish blog on NBCSports.com. Have a great week, Keith. Thanks, Jack.